Nesi Israel Veyom HaKippurim We will now invite Allison Warren Gottermeyer to share the Yisker appeal. I feel socially distanced enough. Good morning. My name is Allison Warren, and I have been a member of the CBI family since I was about two weeks old. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you today as we begin this very different Yisker service. Yom Kippur has often marked a difficult time for my family. In 2002, I sat here in this very shul for Yom Kippur the way we're used to having services all together, with my family, not knowing it would be the last time I would see my grandmother, Doris Warren. It was time together as a family, participating in the traditions which meant so much to all of us. After my grandmother passed away, we all knew she wanted us to remain focused on those things, family and faith. I think of her often, and today, wear her ring in memory of her. Years later, on September 20th of 2009, I sat in this sanctuary again with my family for Yom Kippur. I was set to leave the following morning to go back to my freshman year at Indiana University. Missing in the synagogue that day was my beautiful mother, Gail Warren. It was her birthday, but she felt too sick from her chemotherapy treatments and stayed home. It was the first time she didn't try to just suck it up in front of me, and it was the first day she admitted out loud just how sick she really felt. Rabbi Lusky gave a sermon that day about regrets and lasting legacy. It was at that moment, for some reason, that it clicked in my head that we were really losing my mom. My mom, the pillar of strength, my best friend, my hero, was dying, and I very suddenly knew it. As I rushed off to the bathroom to cry, it was a member of this synagogue family who comforted me. After I pulled it together, I returned to the sanctuary and said the prayers that felt comforting to me because I had been saying them here with my family in this synagogue since before I knew what they meant. I found peace here, in a Jewish community my mom was so proud to be a part of. While Florida wasn't initially her first choice of homes, this Jewish community gave her friends, gave her purpose. She raised my brother and me to be proud of who we are and where we come from. With much of our extended family so far away, we made Congregation B'nai Israel our family. She and my dad did that. And it's the reason I still feel at home here today. As a kid, I attended Hebrew school here. If you remember the old shul, we climbed the walls, no matter how many times you told us not to. As a preteen, my mom joined the board and got us more involved here. As a teenager, I became USY chapter president. The memories here are endless. When mom got sick, it was this synagogue family that helped take care of her and take care of us. Just a few weeks after that last Yom Kippur with her and right before she passed away, I came home to visit her again, this time in the hospital. Throughout that week I was home, I would arrive at the hospital very early in the morning so that my father, who lived in that hospital room with her, could leave the room for a little while to work and she wouldn't be alone during that time. I would lay in the other hospital bed in her room and often fell asleep. One day I woke up to hear her speaking to another member of our Jewish community, a physician, about the pain she knew all of us were feeling. She was in unimaginable discomfort, but she worried most about my dad, about my brother, and me. I guess I was a terrible fake sleeper because after he left the room, she asked, Allie, do you want to talk about it? When I said no, she insisted that we had to. I cried as we discussed what life would be like without her, how it was of paramount importance that I support Dad and Michael just as she would have wanted, and that I go on to live out the dreams that we made together. I apologized for being a difficult teenager, to which she laughed and said anything I did she had done better, and that someday she'd watch over me and laugh as my future daughter gave me a much harder time. Before she died, she worked with a social worker to leave us behind letters a piece of her and her heart. 
And while I think of those times often, wondering what it must have been like for her to imagine our lives without her, I know that it was her faith and it was her family and it was her friends here that gave her the strength to leave each of us what we needed to go on. When she died two weeks later with my father by her side, this synagogue family once again showed up for us in the darkest time. On the day of the funeral, many of you filled this very shul with all of the people who loved her. As horrible as walking into the sanctuary was on that day, the sheer amount of love from the massive number of people in here made it a little less dark. It reminded me just how much my mother meant to this community and just how much this community meant to her. This year marked 10 years since her passing. Next month, it will be 11 years. It's hard to believe so much time has passed because it feels like just yesterday. But if you look around this sanctuary, this shul, if you talk to so many of the people in this Jewish community, her fingerprints are everywhere here. Gail Warren is still very much here in so many of our hearts. I think of her every day. And aside from wearing her smile, walking the way she did, and pretty much inheriting all of her traits, today I wear her earrings and her watch and her kippah as well. It only makes sense that when I moved back to Florida after a decade away chasing the dreams my parents pushed me to pursue, many of the first people I saw were part of the synagogue family. It makes sense that I brought my husband Ryan here to see the synagogue and meet Rabbi Weintraub and Rabbi Lusky as we worked with them to plan our wedding. Like most things in 2020, the wedding didn't end up going quite to plan, but we got married nonetheless with the support from afar of so many in this amazing community. We were here again last Yom Kippur, and I sat in the shul with some of the most important men in my life, my dad, Ryan, and my grandfather. I reflected on that Yom Kippur 10 years prior and once again felt overwhelmed by the memories of losing mom, of the love from this community, and at that moment, the magnitude of sitting here in this shul, praying together and sharing love with one another. That's a memory I will always cherish. On Thanksgiving Day, my dad, my brother, Ryan, and I said goodbye to my grandfather, Philip Warren, as he took his last breath in Sarasota. As he would have wanted, we said the Shema. He identified himself as a husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, and a deeply devoted Jewish man. He helped make our family what it is today. He helped make me who I am today. He loved coming to this shul, and I loved learning about Judaism from him. Many people in this community were blessed to hear his many stories and learn so much from him as well. Today, I stand here wearing his talus. Our family very recently suffered one more profound loss. We lost my Aunt Sandra Warren Levin, my dad's sister. She left behind her husband, two sons, her brother, two grandchildren, and an adoring niece and nephew. But she lived a life of purpose as a fierce advocate for her family and her patients and a proud Jewish woman. I like to believe she joined my grandfather, my grandmother, and my mother in their rightful places close to God. Today, here in the shul, I remember and honor the many Jewish people who raised me here, who helped shape my life here, who helped make me a proud Jewish woman, and who helped make me proud to be part of this community. No matter how far away I've gone, and no matter how my life has changed, Congregation B'nai Israel is the place I've found family, I've found friends, and I'm proud to call home. While I stand here wearing tokens and mementos of the people that I remember, to really honor them, I feel I have to do more. This year, we've faced unprecedented challenges as a country, a community, and as a synagogue. In memory and honor of my mother, Gail Warren, my grandparents, Philip Warren and Doris Warren, and, in on and my Aunt Sandra, Warren Levin, and in honor of all the extended Jewish family we've found here over the years that we have lost, I'll be giving tzedakah to Congregation B'nai Israel, and I ask that you consider doing the same. In normal times, I would now ask people to turn down a tab for the Yardside Appeal. Unfortunately, as I've mentioned, these are not normal times. You should have received a physical Yardside Appeal in the mail, but even if you did not, this is the time to remember and honor your loved ones who are no longer with us by honoring their memory. I hope I've inspired you to give generously, as I will do, and to honor your loved ones in a very tangible way, the way I hope to honor mine. I wish you all a Shana Tova, Gamar Chatima Tova, and with hope for a new 
and much better here. In a normal year, I'd have to stall for a few minutes as the cards were passed and collected. But I will, as Allison said, reminded, say that you have those cards at home. You have the website that very clearly says Yisker Appeal right here. Although I would ask you if you're doing it to make your pledge online to do it this evening. Um, after the holiday. Um, we depend on all of you. We don't exist in a vacuum. And your support is what makes our community possible. And when we say the prayer, in just a moment, Yiskor Elohim et Nishmat, may God remember the soul of my loved one who has gone to their internal home it says in loving testimony to their lives, I pledge to Dhaka to help perpetuate the ideals that are important to them. So it's not, you know, the, the Yisker appeal, the Yisker pledge is not just some esoteric um, way of saying, hey, we're a shul, we need your support. But it's an actual tangible act to honor the memory of your loved one. To say, they supported our community. And so do we. So I have, don't escape. I'm, I'm going to say a few words of Torah first. <laughs> so just as they were about to go run out of the room, when I was a child, like so many others, Yisker was the time to leave the sanctuary. I joined the other kids and play games and talk, maybe sneak into the rabbi's office and have a snack. He had some good snacks in his office. And one year, though, I don't remember how old I was. I was asked to stay and hold the Torah. And that experience changed things for me. It showed me that Yisker was not some moment of terror for grown-ups, for people who had lost something, who had lost someone, but it was a time of consolation, of reckoning with feelings and connecting to God and one another. Yisker is one tiny blessing of being a Jew. The Jewish life cycle has so many important moments, ceremonies, rituals, and taken together they show us the blessings of life. They show us that we are a community, that we support Steve and Allison when they lost Gail, that we support the shares when they lost their mom, Anita, this week. Our tradition says that even in this time of seeming isolation, we are not alone. We're in this together. And while the Yisker prayers themselves do not require a minion, we close them with Kaddish. And Kaddish does. Praising God's name, we gather together spiritually or physically, acknowledging that our holy community strengthens us, that God strengthens us. Yisker is a reminder that our loved ones remain with us that they are vital and important even when they are no longer on the physical plane. I heard a story recently, a tale from the old country, of Yankel and Moisha who regularly fought, fought over where the boundary of their property was. So they invited their Rebbe to come and settle the dispute. And the Rebbe stood and he listened attentively to Moisha. And then he stood and he listened attentively to Yankel. And then he did something that got them a little bit confused. He got down on his hands and knees and he put his hand against the ground, his ear against the ground, and listened to the ground. And he said to them, the ground is laughing at you. It says this land does not belong to you, but that you belong to the land. From dust we are created, and to dust we'll return. The existence of our lives is temporary, yet amidst the brevity of this moment, we have tremendous opportunity. We have choice. We can live a life of meaning or not. We can live a life where we care for other people or not. We can find inspiration or not. We can choose love and life and God and Torah or not. 
There's a touching story about the wisdom and piety of Ruria, the wife of Rebbe Meir in the Talmud. Her two sons died Shabbat afternoon, and Rebbe Meir was in the Beit Midrash, and there was nothing that could be done for them. So Bria covered them carefully in their bedroom and didn't say a word to anyone. After nightfall, Rebbe Meir returned from the house of learning and asked for his sons. She said they were out. She prepared Havdalah, the cup of wine, the light, the spices, and she kept him busy while preparing a malava malka, a meal to celebrate the end of Shabbat to allow him to depart, to, to help the Sabbath queen depart. And after all this time, Rebbe Meir starts, you know, really getting antsy. Where are my kids? And she says, hold on, I have a question for you. Tell me, my husband, what shall I do? Some time ago, something was left with me for safekeeping, and the owner has come to claim it. Do I have to return the property of that owner? And Rebbe Meir says, what are you talking about? What kind of question is this? How can you doubt that the rightful owner can claim what belongs to him? And she takes him by the hand and leads her husband into the bedroom where her two sons, where their two sons lay in eternal sleep. And she removes the bed covers from their bodies and says, I did not want to return them without letting you know. And Rebbe Meir, seeing his sons and realizing that they had passed away, burst out in bitter weeping. And Berea says to him, perhaps with her hand upon his shoulder, my dear husband, didn't you yourself say a moment ago that the owner has the right to claim his property? Adonai Natan Adonai Lakach Yehishem Adonai Mavrach. God gave and God took. Blessed be the name of God. Now I want to offer something strange for a moment and to acknowledge the blessing in our limited lifespan. And I say the word blessing very specifically. If we knew that our lives were infinite, that we had eternity on this earth, we would have no need to accomplish anything. We'd have no need to build a business. We'd have no need perhaps even to care for the sick. They'd get better. We could become animalistic, focusing only on pleasure, ignoring responsibility, or the needs of others. But with our limited time on this earth, we have vital choices to make. How do we live our lives? What are our priorities? As Jews, we have been given the greatest gift in the history of the world, the Torah. And in the Torah, we see not merely a listing of laws, but a love letter, a marriage contract, a living document that helps us respond to the world around us. When we come together for Yisker, we are acknowledging our history. We're acknowledging the history of our own families, the history of our people. We think of those who touched their lives, touched our lives, those without whom we would not even exist. So I want us to take just a moment before we go into the service itself to remember. So join with me, let's take a deep breath. Who would you have sitting next to you? Would it be a parent, a friend, a child? If you could bring anyone back, who would sit next to you in this moment? What would they look like? What age would they be? Would they be older or younger, the age they were when they passed away? What would they be wearing? Perhaps the perfect hat, the favorite jewelry, the watch, the tallest, the kippah. I'm wearing the watch of my grandfather today. Would they wear a coat or a hat? Can you think of their scent? Maybe it was a particular cologne or Old Spice. Can you feel their presence with you? They are glad to be with you today. They are grateful that you are thinking of them, that you are living your life. 
with them as a part of it. And as you have these different people in your minds, I'm thinking about those who founded our community. I'm thinking about the families whose names are on these walls. I'm thinking about the dozen families that met in Charlie Davis's store almost 100 years ago. I'm thinking about David Rothblatt, who went around to Jewish business owners and started the first capital campaign by saying, empty your pockets. And they did, and they got a building. I'm thinking about Hyman Jacobs, the first president of CBI, who served far beyond any term limit we'd have today to build our community. I'm thinking about Rabbi Kleinfeld and Rabbi Chapman. I'm thinking about Dr. Leslie Weiss, may her memory be a blessing, who with Riva and Dean were on calls with me before I came here to CBI. And I'm thinking of those who are still with us, but can't be in the building with us today. There are so many empty seats. I think about Rabbi Lesky and our beloved Adele Morris, who some of us had the privilege to see at Tashlich last week, and who was the first female congregational president. And if I were to go through the list, we'd be here all day. But I know of so many of us who yearn to be together again, and we will. And when I think about all those people, both alive and no longer with us physically, the lesson I see is that you don't necessarily have to be a revolutionary to make this world, to make our community a better place. You have to stand up and be counted. Over and over again in the last 97 years, CBI members have stepped up. They have shown up. They have opened sometimes their wallets, but always their heart. But most importantly, they opened up their souls. On Rosh Hashanah, I reminded you of the fundamental mission of a Kahila Kadosha, to be a Beit Knesset, a Beit Tefillah, a Beit Midrash, a house of gathering and study and prayer. And all three of those take us back to where I began. We're not here alone. We're here together. And in the time to come, we know that these digital experiences will slowly return to analog. It will be safe to gather physically in larger numbers. It won't happen overnight. There's not a magic bullet as much as we would love that. But it will happen, and it will only happen with you. The way it will happen, though, is through all of our work. We have to continue to ensure that CBI is a safe place for our members. We have to continue to work to protect one another, to support one another, to reach out to one another. On Rosh Hashanah, I patted ourselves on the back. I said we called with volunteers to reach every person in our community. And then in those intermediate days, the Aserat Yemei Tshuva, I got a phone call from someone. And they said, I didn't get a call. It was a little tochacha, a little criticism, a little reproof that even as hard as we try, there is more work to be done. We can do better. We will do better. So on this Yom Kippur, let us truly learn from our mistakes. Let us give one another the benefit of the doubt. Work to be there for one another. See the best in one another. Appreciate the gift, the gift of the limited life that we have. Let us use it to its fullest. And as we prepare for Yizkor, I think of those that came before us. These last few months would have been challenging for them too. And I hope that the choices that we made and continue to make would be understandable to them, even if they didn't have the internet and streaming video. I pray that they would have rolled up their sleeves and worked us alongside us to find the Kedusha, the holiness in these moments. And so let us now turn to the Yisker service to remember those who came before us and whose legacies we strive to uphold. Lador Vador 
from generation to generation will build this world with love. Page 290. Adonai, Madam, what did I do? Then I know On this solemn day, we each make judgments about the quality of our life. We re-examine our deeds and relationships with our community and with others. We express our yearnings for a new year, a new beginning, a year during which we commit ourselves to work toward bringing health and peace to all. We long for a year when individually and communally we'll strive to live in a way that is more reflective of the ideals that we cherish. In the midst of looking at our lives and assessing its quality, we pause to reflect and remember and to dedicate ourselves anew. She beat your nile and her beat on me. Kim, Mimini, Monemont, Lorenz, Machlimi, Boyogel, Kemoni. The deaths of those we now remember left holes in our lives, but we're grateful for the gift of their lives and we're strengthened by the blessings they left us and the precious memories that comfort and sustain us as we recall them this day. Let's read together on the left side of the page we recall. Some of us recall parents who watched over us, nursed us, guided us, and sacrificed for us. Some of us lovingly call to mind a wife a husband, a partner with whom we were truly united in our hopes and our pains and our failures and our achievements and our joys and our sorrows. Some of us remember brothers and sisters who grew up together with us, sharing in the play of childhood, in the youthful adventure of discovering life's possibilities, bound to us by a heritage, a family tradition, and by years of togetherness and love. Some of us call to mind children, entrusted to us too briefly to whom we give our loving care and from whom we received a trust that enriched our lives. So many of us recall beloved relatives and friends whose affection and devotion enhanced our lives and whose visible presence will never return to cheer, encourage, or support us. Though they are gone, we are grateful for the blessings they brought to our lives. We are sustained and comforted by the thought that their presence in our lives remains an enduring blessing that we can bequeath to others. We can show our devotion to them by our devotion to those ideals that they cherished. O oh God of love, make us worthy of the love we received by teaching us to love you with all our hearts, and with all our soul, and with all our might, and to spread the light of your divine love on all whose lives touch ours. Give us strength to live faithfully, for we are cheered by our confidence that you will not permit our lives to be wasted, but will bring all our worthy strivings to live on even as we may not see fulfillment. And this year we, so many changes. The memorial book was digital. 
but I want to share a poem from page 53 from Kana Senesh. There are stars whose radiance is visible on Earth, though they have long been extinct. There are people whose brilliance continues to light the world, though they are no longer among the living. These lights are particularly bright when the night is dark. They light the way for humankind. We'll now rise and take some time offering our personal prayers on 291 and 292. On 292, there's the meditation for those whose relationship with their parents was challenging and hurtful. And in the uh, Yisker booklet on page 49 is a prayer for those whose parents are still with us. God, remember the souls of our friends, members of this Kila Kadosha, who have gone to their eternal home. May their souls be bound up in the bond of life. May these moments of meditation strengthen the ties that link us to their memory. May they rest in peace forever in God's presence. Amen. Exalted, compassionate God, comfort the bereaved families of this congregation. Help them to perpetuate everything that was worthy in their lives of those no longer with us, who we remember this day. May their memory endure us a blessing and let us say amen. We remember those who passed away in 5780. Sylvia Ace, Lou Bader, Dr. Marvin Bales, Asher Gill, Dorothy Goldblatt, Greta Gomez, Hannah Krasner, Barbara Levin, Dr. Mitchell Levine, Jeffrey Liu, Jane Silverberg, Beula Steele, Michael Walker. We think of those whose life was cut short by the Nazi atrocities. Exalted, compassionate God, grant perfect peace in your eternal presence among the holy and pure, whose radiance is like the heavens to the souls of all the men and the women and children of the house of Israel, who were slaughtered and strangled and burned in the Shoah. May they rest in paradise, master of mercy, may they find eternal shelter beneath your sheltering wings. And may their souls be bound up in the bond of life, Adonai is their portion. May they rest in peace and let us say, Amen. 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 Page 293, Al Male Rahamim. <laughs> Turn. 
to share the poem from our Yisker, Yisker book, We Remember Them. After each line, I invite you to join with me by saying, We Remember Them. At the rising of the sun and its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are part of us as we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us, as we remember them. We'll say Kaddish together, page 294. Yitz Gadal v'yitz Kaddash Shemerava V'yomad v'yikrat v'yiratei v'yamlech v'yamlech the Kayakon, Yomakon, Kayate of Old Age Israel, Magala, Wisman, Kari, Yimru, Amen. Yesh, Mer Adam, Mora, Leodam, Mole, Amaya. Yet Barat, Vishtava, Vitaar, Vitromam, Vinase, Vitatar, Vitale, Vitala, Smith, Kusha, Brito. The Ela, the Ela, the Mogar, Hata, Shirata. You may be seated, Ashray, page 295, as we prepare to return the Torahs to the Ark. Ashmeus Mimitaka, Yonanu Kasela, Ashem Shakakalo, Ashnailo, Ali, Lala David, and Kamali Kalikashi. Kadola, 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 Kadola,